Now, uh, so uh, that was good in our way, but, but it uh, but gives long lesson, gives long lesson that going through this kind of uh, time dependent power distribution as F1 RPT and F2 R2, R1 of one R2 PPT, that did work. So here then um, uh, our group that looked for the equilibrium properties. What we are going to do now is equilibrium statistical mechanics. For equilibrium uh, uh, properties, we do not need the static test. Why? He said, look, the, the, we can as well, instead of doing properties by time averaging, I can also measure many, many samples of the same thing, for example, of glass of water. I can make millions and millions of trillions of copies of those glass of water. And then I make one time measurement. One time measurement, and then I do uh, that is kind of the thing you do in titration. One time measurement, and you get the value and add it up and divide by number of measurements, right? Now, when you make the instantaneous measurement, what do you get? You get the system at a instantaneous state. And what do I mean by the instantaneous state? I made an instantaneous microscopic state. What do I mean by microscopic state? By microscopic state, I mean that every atom and molecules of this system are in specific positions and specific uh, orientation with uh, velocities, momentum, and all these things. Now, there is, of course, one thing that you understand is by saying that, that there is a mixed thing here, hybrid thing going on, because in real world, we do not really make one shot measure. These days we can do sometime by sending laser, almost instantaneous, but otherwise classical measurements themselves are time averaging. So we always mix the time averaging and what we call ensemble averaging. And this is a very powerful technique in computer simulation these days, because much of the stat pack is now implemented in computer simulation. All the analytical work and mathematical analysis has its place of honor and respect. Mm, and those people are respected very much, but they are numbered those doing those kind of work and less and less. Now coming back. So so this hybrid thing is also in simulation. We do choose a large number of maybe five to ten initial configuration and then we run the trajectory. Run the trajectory means is go through all the phase space and average what the trajectory and then average what the initial five or ten configurations. This is a hybrid technique which is very successful, which essentially we do in experiment. Okay. But if I don't do the hybrid thing, I said, okay, I instantaneous measurements of these billions and billions of my mental replica, I do get values where I can average, I'll get the same as the trajectory. Time average. So this was the, what the observation made by the great leader Gibbs. And then he set out to do this, uh, uh, set out to do, do this, uh, develop a theory. And then, uh, uh, sometimes of my end, um, I, I, I find it amazing to believe. He was a very loner, didn't marry. Uh, he used to go to his uh, lab in Stalin laboratory. Very methodical man. We we'll have a little bit of uh, we have Wheeler Gibbs here in the book. Some quotations for people like Millikan and other uh, people. One thing comes to my mind, they asked Einstein, who is the person you think is the greatest thinking man of your generation of the world? He, 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 he was thinking, and then they said, do you think Max Planck? Einstein said no. Why? He gave a reason. Then they asked um, Lawrence, the Lawrence transformation on relativity theory is based, Lawrence. He said no, and he had given reason every time. Then said who? So Einstein said, I never had the good fortune of meeting Willard Gibbs, uh, whom he considered the best brain, Einstein termed the best brain of America. But he said that uh, I would have liked to meet him, but, uh, but uh, died before he went to Africa. But he said that he's the, he's the person who thinks that he is the best brain of that. <clears throat> 19th of the century, half of 20th century. Now, coming back. So, what made William Gibbs make those postulates? <coughs> One thing I can understand the ensemble average, 
uh, equal to time average, put ensemble average to be written first, then the time average, ensemble average equal to time average, then he had to set out, so okay, now I have made the uh, assumption or postulate, now I have to set out to calculate in ensemble. I don't want to do time averaging, I want to do ensemble averaging. And then he made the postulate that all the microscopic states of the system are equal to the equally priority probability. The reason, the reason is that he had no other option because he chose the ensemble MBE, constant number, constant volume, constant energy. So all microscopic states, even then there are these trillions and trillions of microscopic states. <coughs> you know, more than you can even imagine. So the idea is very simple. Idea is very simple. There are so many states. You know. and so the every system will be in a different microscopic state. Okay, that means you, for example, say you have uh, uh, hundreds of energy levels and you have two particles you are going to put in, two to three particles. Then there is very unlikely probability that they will have the same energy level is nearly zero. This is the reason also why uh, Boltzmann statistics, Fermi-Dirac, and uh, both statistics become the same, identical at high temperature. They approach each other essentially because statistics becomes irrelevant because at the high temperature number of energy levels become so much that you, you know, your uh, particle will never be other than zero and one. So everything becomes the same. That is the reason all the three statistics, quantum statistics and classical statistics. Okay? That's not described anywhere else, but I think it has been done here. And I was very proud of that. It is not done anywhere else. And I, 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 I you know, put the explanation myself. Then I was told sarcastically in uh, Bombay I when I was teaching that no, Landau has its Landau means that Landau is his book. I do do that. Okay. So that's the book I just put most. So coming back now, this then equally probably property is okay, acceptable. Then he landed up the trouble that okay. Uh, my, I, have, I have taken care of my ensemble, uh, but now I am very really happily filling up all the microscopic states. But what is the guarantee? What assures me that my in time averaging, my system really goes through all these things? Because in time averaging, the system must explode all these microscopic states. Then he came. He had to connect these two, rectify by doing what is algorithmic hypothesis. And that's, I told you, is a branch of mathematics by itself. Uh, many departments have more than one mathematician working on algorithmic hypothesis in the mathematics department here. So, that is the uh, Wheeler Gibbs. The algorithmic hypothesis to an extent can go, go back uh, the, in, the, in, the, in the molecular chaos and Boltzmann. <coughs> okay. So, now we have. The microcanonical, this ensemble, this mental replica of billions of billions of my system, all constant in the E is called microcanonical. All in the E ensemble. This is very, very uh, important. Uh, so by the way, you guys got the uh, uh, assignment now. So it, <coughs> I think we also should do some uh, multiple choice at the same time. Because of uh, what is here. You can only do that. Okay, two minutes. Okay. So, uh, mm, so now, uh, so this is what is from my book. The concept of an ensemble is based on the realization that the system could be very large. This, there are many more things are there. Mm. Uh, in a desperate attempt, to explain things to <coughs> students. Again, the same thing I am saying, we cannot follow the exact evolution of the system anyway. Uh, even if we did, it's not useful because so much proper number you cannot do anything. Okay. So therefore, this ensemble is generated. We have no control over the micro state of the mentally. That's why uh, equally probably probability is now explained. Uh, mentally conical collection of energy is called ensemble. Ensemble, ensemble, ensemble. That is the monetary levels. Uh, they are very detailed. Uh, huge amount of data, 
is a sensorless. Okay, <coughs> ground will be probably the theory. Uh, okay, now we'll start from here. Okay, so others I have already done. So, microcanonical answer for MB answer. Then that means in each member of my ensemble, which is my system, is a replica of my original system. Each of them have constant number, same number, same volume, and same energy. <laughs> and as I said, this is important for the theory of relativity. However, this is not the real system. Because much of the time, in chemistry, also in physics, we do not have fixed volume, we have fixed pressure. Most of our experiments are done in fixed pressure, and the phase transition, volume <coughs> okay? We are uh, constantly interacting with the surrounding, so we do not have constant energy. Instead, we have temperature, which is called temperature bar, that will cover us. And many times, particles are exchanged from one side to other side, for example, the osmosis experiments, or even when you have a um, liquid openly in an air, it's extending. Then what we don't have the number n, but what do we have instead of n? Louder. We have the chemical potential. Okay, you should have told that. So, the basically experiments are done when we preferably have not the extensive properties, but the intensive properties. Because we cannot control the extensive properties, but you can control the intensive properties. Okay. Now, this is not done in uh, one shot. One does systematically and with a certain amount of work, this is all again done, at least uh, three or four ensembles, uh, done by Uda Gibbs. Uh, first, he, he, he placed he allowed energy to be exchanged between two systems and in a bath, and that introduced the concept of temperature. Then he allowed exchange of volume or volume to fluctuate, keep the system at constant pressure called barostat. So that was the NPT. Much later, uh, that Gibbs ensemble is the ensemble which actually we call by chemical potential comes in. That part I have already did uh, at the very last. So here are then some A of these uh, many different ensembles that we use. So, and we'll do something, a very important thing, which is the uh, power average potential and the symbol of the Poisson function. This is a very important uh, slide, but we'll come back to it many, many times. So one is the microcanonical ensemble and there is the canonical ensemble grand canonical ensemble and as I am saying one by one, so canonical ensemble we replace the energy by temperature, so it becomes NPT, that's called canonical ensemble, then grand canonical ensemble we replace now the, we keep the volume fixed but we, the, the reason one of the things these are popular uh, in simulations which is uh, tricky to allow the variation of volume. So this, of course, is more difficult. So this is uh, grand canonical. Then this is the one what I was telling here is the experimental system. Many times we face in chemistry, which is <coughs> isothermal, isobaric ensemble. So then we start at microcanonical ensemble because that's where all the postulates are. Then go relax one by one. We can go to canonical ensemble. This is this uh, deliberately put at the center because that is the one which. <laughs> Many times, our uh, choice in theoretical study. Computer uh, study, many times, we do these, these things for reasons uh, that will become clear in time. But in uh, theoretical and analytical studies, this is the ensemble that we most often like. But that means if we start doing a calculation, we, as you will see, we will start with the canonical ensemble and the partition function Q. So whenever in, in Statman guy going to take the partition function, he first to write down Q. And there are certain very important quantities that's put on the right. These are called thermal and potential. These are related to this. These are the partition function. You can derive this down. It's a macroscopic uh, thing and it's the weight of the system. <coughs> weight of the entire system is the partition function and I'll tell you how. And 
This is is the uh, quantity which depends is a, is a, on extensive properties and extensive properties PV you can make extensive by taking uh, for example one mole pressure is extensive or column is extensive uh, so these in, these partition functions which are macroscopic weight of the system are connected to the thermodynamic potential and there is a logic behind that which we develop right now starting with the, uh, this one we will develop the rest of the logic so okay time averaging ensemble averaging we have done this trajectory we have done measure of ergodicity it is a very important thing uh, that i did not uh, spend too much time but there is a beautiful paper i would like to draw your attention to is this uh, mountain and thirumalai devaraj and thirumalai he is a very good scientist and a good friend of mine uh, in the what a beautiful paper read this paper this is a nice paper and if you want to do project one of them you can do an ergodicity if you are mathematically inclined and they found measure what are the conditions the system can be ergodic and all these things are connected to the function of the system measure of ergodicity okay now uh, then there are one more thing that uh, beautiful thing and this also physically related that you take a point particle and this is called uh, uh, hard disk scatterers. These are called Lorentz gas, very famous thing, which was solved first by uh, the only first attempt to show a real system is uh, ergodic, means it goes over all over the place in phase space. Was done by a great mathematician called Sinai, Gunyovich and Sinai. They considered the hard disk scatterers and a point particle, and then they, he showed a proof that that system is ergodic. Uh, and these people showed that that um, ergodic and you can calculate diffusion constant and they established that they came out with a very, very well cited and very nice paper the periodic Lorentz gas you should now uh, read so these are all uh, okay so then uh, I'll do the rest which I don't have uh, things here but uh, now let's start on the microcanonical answer So, uh, I think I don't need that. Uh, do you have the other one open? Okay. What is the potential? What is the potential? Let me see. Oh, this is a beautiful one. Willard Gibbs did for statistical mechanics and for thermodynamics, what Laplace did for statistical mechanics and Maxwell did for influence. Namely, made his field, this field, eh? very nice thing. His field uh, is well finished. He just finished everything, I told you. Okay. Now, uh, one of the important things is uh, weight of a uh, system in an ensemble. How to define the weight? Now, I have uh, large enough system in statistical mechanics. See, one of the just quantum mechanics did this spectroscopy. Statistical mechanics original aim and still remains is to explain thermodynamics. But thermodynamics are general. So, if you think of quantum, you think of spectroscopy, you think of statistical mechanics, you think of thermodynamics and chemical dynamics and phase transition. Okay. And biology is sharing. Now, uh, so I have to start with defining weight of a system. So I have a system which is MBE. <coughs> now, I have a huge number of microscopic sticks. And all sticks that equal to our weight. Then tell me what should be the weight of the system. What should be weight of the system? Come 
power raise the hand to what is over there. Okay, I have a system, n number of particles, that volume V, and energy E, and I, I know nothing about it, except I know it has a bunch of magnetic states. Now tell me one thing, if I have two systems, and uh, I'm going to tell you something very, very fundamental and hope you will be point that I appreciate it enough, but two systems, similar characteristic, one is more microscopic state than the other. Which will be more stable? The one more microscopic state. Exactly. So then, why it will be more stable? This is something very fundamental. It has more entropy. Exactly. What? It has more entropy. Why? But then why entropy is important. Okay. Connection between entropy and uh, number of microscopic states is very profound. And I will write it down. But why? The having more microscopic states and more entropy makes the system stable, more stable. Think about it. I asked, I told you, this is the most fundamental thing that I, we still work on this kind of concepts. I repeat, I am saying you have a system with a more microscopic state, has more entropy, it is more stable, but what? Old days when I was young, I used to start a uh, teaching a course by saying that the way of a course is to do not what. Most of the time it is taught as what, but it is why and how. Hmm. Oh, by the way, this is the, I wrote a book. Well, I didn't read a book, write a book. My students wrote a book essentially. I had written some blogs. They put it together and this you can buy. There is a price to it because it's, uh, we sell publish, but it is in uh, in Tata Book House. It's also in Kindle, but it gets uh, many times go they have they, they, they are kind of sold out uh, because there is not a book like that. How to perform well in academics? Um, okay, how to perform well in academia? Guidebook for young researchers. I guess all of you qualify for young researchers. Okay. There's a blog on that. That's what I remember. That's why I brought the book. The why and how. Somewhere I think it is there. Why? The ecosystem has more entropy. Uh, the amount of energy that can be converted into good quality of God is less. No. The reason is that when you say system is more stable means that system spends more time in that state. So, more microscopic state equally probably means the system will be in that state much more. So, whenever we say something is stable, it means the system staying there. So, it is very intimately connected with time. That's why entropy also called the arrow of time. Entropy and time, in many cases, are intimately related. And this is one very fundamental thing of, of, of nature. Okay, so, so a system, if I compare two systems, so you can read one, uh, and I say, okay, it's a bistable potential, two minima, and one will have more um, deeper minima than other. The one which has more entropy is deeper minima, we know that. But the reason is that the system spends more time there. We don't really care who is stable, but in that side. Because we want to measure the property. The more stable one will influence the property. And the more stable one means the system is going to spin in that state more. Okay. And that I'm saying, that's why entropy and time are many ways are very closely related. Okay. So now we know what is the weight of the uh, weight uh, of the system. So weight of this will be uh, number. And this is the rotation is omega. Now, and this is the partition function of the micro 
come to us. Okay. This is the first time I use the term partition function and we'll use it again and again because this is central to such connectivities. Now we need to connect the number of microscopic states omega. So it's okay uh, to say that and say we have a way to calculate number of microscopic states. One can indeed do that for certain cases um, like in quantum uh, way of number of uh, uh, filling up the energy levels in a particle in a box. One can calculate the number of states and then get the density of states and that a highly non-trivial result comes out which are used in, uh, in, in, in electron, to describe electron gas and metals and many other problems. The actual goes to scale through the energy to the square which is a very important uh, property that comes out from there which if I don't do it would be the uh, homework. Okay, so now having obtained the total number of microscopes of the system we need to now connect it to a thermodynamic property. And as you all said, I'm writing it down because there is, uh, there is a proof, but that proof is uh, or several proofs, but all of them are getting uh, dicey. So the, this is famous Boltzmann formula. So entropy, have you, you have, all of you know it, huh? And I'll give you a proof, but I'm telling you the proof is uh, the dicey. Boltzmann wrote it down. He got it from his Boltzmann kinetic equation, which is <laughs> complicated derivation. He found the function, he, he called it H and minus KB and omega, and that is where the, his came, he came that it is the arrow of time. That came. But that came from his equation. This they consider to be the most important contribution of Boltzmann atom. Many, many contributions are there. Most important uh, area that it is in the, in the past of uh, Louis Gray, called the past of Boltzmann, where he was in the University of Vienna. And uh, his past, is, we had to get some of the original ones. That this is a beautiful Boltzmann formula. Getting a copy to a amount of space equation to a point. Okay. So, so this actually, the statistical mechanics starts with this. I'll give you a very simple derivation, but this is probably, we say, the most important equation of statistical mechanics that entropy is related to KB is the Boltzmann constant. 1.38 to the of minus 16 arcs and the people don't uh, yeah, sorry. I think 1.38 and 16 okay uh, still we don't know why Boltzmann constant has that uh, value hmm? but we know that if I multiply by the Avogadro number what do we get uh, universal gas constant you can measure R, so you know the order number, you can get the value of KB. Okay, but why KB has that value, we don't know. Like we don't know why Planck constant has that value. That was supposed to be the goal of string theory or super string theory or things like that. Okay, so now I'll give you a very trivial derivation of these things that in all the textbooks and you know should be doing in my book also. So there's one thing that they uh, as you can see my hesitation. Okay, so there are certain very nice things here that um, how, we, how we went. Uh, postulates, concept of air uh, ensemble, construction of ensemble. This is just I showed the microgram the ensemble. Okay, so now in microgram this will be setting some problems that uh, now how, how do you calculate omega? How you calculate omega the microscopic stores? So here are some examples given here that there are four particles or spins in a, a energy levels are four. Uh, 
for what it is and total energy how much is 10 no? No, 8 uh, okay 2 and 6 8 so if I have a total energy 8 I give you 4 energy levels so the energy 0 1 2 3 and I give you 4 spins or particles drop away this is the uh, the total number omega exposed what you will find that as number of energy as the total energy increases and the number of energy levels increases and also number of particles increases this number of microscopic states available to you will increase enormously and this is where also the statistics come here i have done the boltzmann statistics if you were bose then there is say zero and one and that energy these energy levels those statistics will be at those zero. Hmm? All right. So there are many problems like that, and we set some problem. Okay. Now the derivation. As I told you, the derivation is a little dicey, but we know from thermodynamics. We know for it, everybody likes this derivation. We know we know from thermodynamics that uh, like binary mixture, XL and XA, so probability. Of their uh, n, n number of states, n number of uh, states, then I probability, since they're equally probable, equally probable, equal probability, probability, I have probability of each states 1 over omega. I start with this derivation of entropy. Okay? Then Pj is 1 over omega in V. Correct? Then you put it here, then you get ln 1 over omega, and you have this is 1 over omega, uh, this is, yeah, 1 over uh, uh, omega, then you sum over, you get omega, because there is an omega number of states, and then 1 over omega here, and sum is, since there is, there will be no J index inside, because each state is equally probable, and then they cancel, so you get minus, and 1 over minus ln omega, you get this. There is the standard textbook derivation of uh, Boltzmann problem. Mm. Such a simple derivation of probably what I claim to be the most important yeah, uh, in equation of statistical mechanics. Nothing wrong with this. What is PJ? Hmm? What is PJ? Probability of being in state J. What is the problem? Is there any difficulty with this simple derivation? That you have omega number of microscopic states. Each state is equally probable. No, you are going to don't do that. All right, you are not going to think it there. So you have uh, Shantan is worried that it's missing me. Now uh, so you have omega number of microscopic states. Each state is equally probable. So, probability of each state is 1 over omega. I have an entropy just like from binary mixture, all these things, mixing of these uh, microscopic states, PGL and PJ. That's okay. Is that acceptable? PGL and PJ. And then I put PJ equal to 1 over omega. Then you get this. this as I told you, uh, uh, Boltzmann derived it very different way, much more complex way. Okay. It is kind of disappointingly simple derivation. Okay. Now, uh, so there is a picture of the uh, microchemical ensemble. Essentially, this that you have all isolated <coughs> systems. An important thing I forgot to tell. There are many of them are NV, 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 all of them. There is no contact between them. They don't interact. They don't interact with anybody in the outside. That's why these are called isolated systems. And uh, the entropy of such a uh, system is given by KB. Now, very important thing to note here that Boltzmann introduced that this model, but at that time, we didn't know that it is entropy. So we can as well considered that uh, this derivation shows there is entropy but if I don't have the derivation I have a function 
I have said, okay, I have a uh, uh, ensemble, I have a uh, system NVE. I define a function S, uh, even omega. Now, you tell me why uh, we do have, uh, why do we take logarithmic? What? Somebody must tell that. I'll give the hint. Because of additivity, like my A into B can be represented close as Close to it, close to it. Uh, you are 50 percent there, not 50. I'll give you the hint. Entropy, which is we call it thermodynamic uh, potential of the system. Thermodynamic potential is the one that you have to have the extremum value. Actually, that has to be maximum uh, for the stability of the system. So you pick, you always pick out uh, the omega and then you maximize it, and we get the good gap state of the system. But the hint is that entropy is an extensive problem. Now tell me, why I took log? The difficult question. Yeah, the real is that microscopic states, if you calculate microscopic number of microscopic states, is an exponential function. So it is goes as omega scales as a to the power n. Okay. It is a to the power n. And so now you take the log, it will happen again and again. All the thermodynamic potentials will be logarithmic. And that because the, this is the weight of the system, this grows exponential. This we can show in many, many cases. In that case, you want to have, if you want this to be an extensive property, only choice you have is to take the log. And these are exact results. When Boltzmann did, whether he did or not, um, uh, Gibbs did, we don't know whether they know or that. Uh, but in every case, this will be probably they knew that what they're doing very well. All right. Um, so, what I was saying that, aside from this uh, logarithmic business, I have a function which is a b l n omega. I don't know what is the entropy. So uh, then I will have to show that this function is, is indeed the entropy. So that will again and again happen. We will introduce a logarithmic of the uh, partition function. And you will see many, many partition function and you become comfortable with that. The logarithmic of that, we get a function like in case of canonical ensemble, we will take the logarithmic of the partition function then that will become the free energy, how much free energy. In one case, it will become Gibbs free energy. It will go like that. So, all the thermodynamic properties, as I told you, statistical mechanics gives you, thermodynamics does not uh, give you by itself the calculations, because unless you go through, even there, you know, there are a lot of, lot of, lot of, as I told you, breaks to get the uh, experiment, even experimentally getting the value of free energy, you see, you know, it's very dicey. Uh, and, uh, and we needed a calculational scheme to calculate thermodynamics. Thermodynamics itself doesn't give you uh, itself, and so, but uh, statistical mechanics, one of the purpose of statistical mechanics is to start from first principles, from microscopic uh, considerations with interaction potential, then calculate the thermodynamic properties. Okay, so that is the main goal of statistical mechanics they start with a uh, Fundamental principles with interaction potential then go up and see how the microscopic properties are calculated. And that is how I get free energy, how I get entropy, how I get enthalpy, how I get specific, specific heat. All these things are the goal of statistical mechanics. Okay? So, so now this is where the thumb, the thumb, one shows that indeed. The statistical mechanics, the uh, sorry, the Boltzmann formula that that is defined is the entropy. So the way it is done is the following: that you go and you now expand. A is the function of n b. Okay. So then we can write d x this quantity, this quantity, this quantity. That's okay. Very simple, right? 
we also know the Euler's relation is then from Euler relation we find d d s equal to t d d v equal to s n this is, is a chemical potential there is no problem on that that all of you have done again and again so we use the cyclic rule is there any problem you guys have done a lot okay and then uh, and this condition the just cyclic rules I am not going to this okay Anyway, the book will have all the details, or not just my book, there is other book, MacQuery, which also has these uh, uh, things. The above expression for DAs now become this. This is the equation, I just put that in this. In this, I just put all the equations. And I get these conditions. And now, lo and behold, it's very popular. Uh, this is exactly the relation that we have uh, in thermodynamics. So then, that gives me all the now expressions. My familiar expression, my familiar expression. There is nothing else that happened. That establishes that entropy. That S is the entropy. And okay, back and forth. I, I know many things, but then I get these beautiful relations. This beautiful relation that what is temperature? Because see, this my system NVE. It doesn't have temperature. It is just NVE and intermolecular interactions between the particles. Now I can calculate omega. I am given omega. What I calculate, but that is the starting point. If I know omega, I know that function is which is entropy. By comparison of Euler equation, I get that from cell consistency. But now I take the day, this is a beautiful thing. That if I change the total energy of the system on my NVE. Ah, so, every week, every teacher has certain uh, idiosyncrasy. So, uh, so, I really like this equation. And now I put A is equal to KB and then omega. And lo and behold, this beautiful relation between the temperature and the magnetic state of the system comes in. Remember, entropy and temperature are called what they are called? S, T, P, V, N, mu, conjugate value, etc. That's why energy and <laughs> energy is also one of them. It's the energy and temperature are closely related. You increase the temperature. You increase the temperature, you increase the number of uh, states accessible. Other one is also beautiful. See, pressure now is given by derivative tip of this, of course, you know all of you. And SPT, remember SPT. Sport is this with the Maxwell's relations. So then I get pressure from this. And I get chemical potential also. So, chemical potential now comes out by taking the, the uh, omega and taking the derivative of omega with respect to omega. Okay. Now, I, I just want to read this. So, equation 5.9, I, I might find a mistake here. So, are remarkable as they give our familiar thermodynamic functions in terms of changes in normal microscopic quantity and the so see, what then statistical mechanics started with? Statistical mechanics goal was to get you thermodynamic properties from first principles. Okay. Now, I'll give you a very nice example. How does it happen? Let me say I have a, and this experiment people have done. I have a jar. Okay. Now, in that jar, I I should have come out there. Okay. That means I should have done blue jar and ah. Okay. This I open. Then I am going to put some marbles. And 
and want to back them. Okay? And I want to now talk about number of microfluidic states. Okay? The number is um, if you want, it can't be a greater number than one should be for We have been classical system, so we are distinguishable. Okay? Alright? Now I am now the marble marble eh? uh, what is the interaction between marbles? Interaction potential between two marbles. Yeah, no, every particles. Huh? So it is one by the distance square. No, that's what the uh, dipole and ions. Have you heard of the name hard square potential? Billy at all? Hard disk that Bubina Vajansi and I did, and why they did that. So this potential is hard square potential is. Yeah, so this is separation between them are when they come to sigma, sigma is a molecular diameter, we are we close to infinity. So this region is inaccessible, right? A. Now let us say for the time being, I don't have gravity, particles are floating. Now, I ask you, so the total volume accessible. Now, I tell you, I give you such that I volume V, in a volume V, I give you N, and they have only kinetic energy, they don't have any potential energy because I, they have zero infinity. Infinity is ruled out because of e to the power minus beta of V, what's meant? Now you can calculate how you are going to calculate the number of microscopic states of the system. Okay, the way we do, we, we can give a problem. We can set it up in grid, divide the volume into total volume of the size of the marble. Then I do a combinatorics. So I say NB is the number of boxes there, and in you go there. NH is the number of hard spheres. Then I know how to fit, um, um, uh, distribute NH balls into NB grids, right? Boxes. I know the total number. Okay. So then I get omega. If I get the omega, I can calculate my entropy system. Now I go on adding the marbles. What will happen? I pack them, but then there will come a time when I won't be able to put anything. I can try to squash them, but these are hard spheres, they will not go. So I have a number n given volume V. I give you a number where omega is 0. Okay. That means what? This is called excluded volume. That means there are states which are not possible to exist. So, why I am telling all you this? The interaction between omega and intermolecular potential. So, intermolecular potential determines what is the omega. Okay. Now, if you have the walls, then I can pack a little bit more. But ultimately, again, my uh, putting them with, with a hard square kind of interaction. Now, Leonard Jones interaction, uh, uh, Vendor Walls is what we call Leonard Jones interaction. Then that has the, this harsh, all molecules and atoms in the world has this harsh potential because of overlapping between electrons. So, this is Leonard Jones. One can test all Leonard Jones properties beautifully in terms of radial distribution function, something we'll do later. This is the energy here, yeah, and this is the again given and the natural potential. Let me write down because you will see that more later. When you and you will learn how to describe these things. Okay, so given so my main uh, uh, main uh, what I want to submit before you that given the interaction potential, 
I can get the get omega. Then, if necessary, I, I allow all the omega, then I maximize omega. I maximize entropy. NVE, entropy is the thumb, what you call thermodynamic potential. And we'll get used to that. Okay. So, given the, then the connection between interaction potential, now I go back. Now we go back and do see that these are remarkable as they give us our familiar thermodynamic functions in terms of changes in total number of microscopic states of the system. Uh, temperature, the energy system is increased, where they are telling you in number of molecules accessible to it increases and then that. As mentioned before, the microchemical ensemble is not realistic because in the real world, we do not keep energy increased. Hello, come in. Number 15 and the uh, uh, extensive. <coughs> so, <coughs> however, this is my example of relation between interaction potential and omega, and my relations given here essentially for the time being, we are done with the microchemical ensemble. Then we are going to do the canonical ensemble, okay? Uh, we'll start on the canonical ensemble today, and uh, but uh, I do want to emphasize the beauty of the whole thing. I do want to see this is the, we'll give you problem, particularly in a box, to calculate the number of omega. And we'll be able to do that. So this is the micro canonical uh, beauty of the equation put in the box. And as I tell you, this is the most important equation of the statistical mechanics and considered one of the most important equations of the entire natural science or biological science. Uh, because the entire theoretical foundation of quantum classical mechanics, uh, I'm sorry, statistical mechanics or quantum statistical mechanics or many body theory all flows from this equation. Really, simply. Okay. So now we are done with that. So, we go to canonical ensemble. Okay. So, we are now a system, okay, I made the statement and it's a exact statement that everything flows from microchemical ensemble from the KV and omega. Uh, and you see that we use that again and again. That's our starting point and every time, whatever you do, we go back to that. We put those tests in the case. But we will go further and further, then of course you will not need that. We will not use KVN and omega as such. But then what will happen that whatever you derive, I derive from that KVN and omega. Okay, now, so canonical ensemble. Now let us start constructing canonical ensemble and do the result. Uh, so, see the system characterized by KV and N. I like NVT. Why does KV and N? I don't know. Oh, okay, it has been put in because to put that we are going to see. With this energy by temperature, that's why it was put in the past. To be in this order, we shall construct an ensemble. Each system of the ensemble is characterized by NVD, which is more close to experiment. In many cases, we have an NVD, and in computer simulation, we often the system we simulate in computer, and then take the averages and calculate the properties or dynamics. 
the group all the data these are easy some and uh, so what gives me here is absolutely fantastic and it's a quite a quite a fit intellectual fit uh, and in most classes this is not fit but we will get to this uh, we what is now done is we form first form an ensemble of large number of entry systems. That ensemble is a large number of entry systems, interpret features of many ways. A large collection. Now we have I am going to introduce a new notation NT. NT is the total number of systems in the ensemble. I have an ensemble where each system is characterized by NBT. Now I have have in my ensemble I have NT number of systems. So how many total number of particles I have? NT NT into N. Good boy, NT into N. What is total volume? Okay. Oh. But temperature doesn't matter because temperature is an intense property. Okay. So now what I do? I put all these systems together and put them into a, a massive heat bath. So, I empty replicas of original NBT, I put them together, I hope I have it uh, a, somewhere here. Yeah. Now, I have put them in a huge heat bath and also allows contact between. The purpose of allowing a contact between them that they can exchange energy. Energy uh, uh, exchange is allowed, but it is a heat bath temperature. It is fixed. fixed. <coughs> so I have this. So all of them are NBT. Number is not allowed to exchange. Volume is not allowed to exchange. Energy is allowed to exchange. That is more realistic. Now what I do? I put after a sufficient amount of time when they have reached a stable temperature and they themselves will act as a mass of themselves. I remove the bath. It's almost like you know the kind of construction you are seeing of a solar bus. And then uh, uh, and then I going to now do certain calculations of the MV. So once I have isolated, now I remove that. Now all of them together, and I <coughs> put an insulated insulation black black air on top. And now I don't allow any more exchange of energy. Of course, there is no exchange of number and volume. So now I can treat without that as a super ensemble, which is a microcanonical. So I have constructed an ensemble, a microcanonical ensemble out of a canonical ensemble. Now I am going to calculate, and that's a little elaborate, I said it's not done most of the classes. Uh, well, uh, to all the honest to my colleague professor, most of you will know how to do this. But anyway, but we'll do it in the next class. Mm. Uh, to calculate the, how do you do Bartram function of the microcanonical ensemble. Okay. All right, and you will like it. It's a lot of fun. Okie dokie. So, you remember this? Have you seen Sound of Music? There's Uncle Jack. You remember Uncle Jack was coming and this, they're coming back with the caption. And then Uncle Jack, there was a, there was a church and uh, and all these things. And there was a beautiful music coming. Uncle Jack was a musician, or he used to promote musicians. He said, This is, he said, they are good. They are very, very good. Maybe I should enroll them into some competition. The captain said, That way, you know, you get that. And Jack said they should be famous. That, that way, they get the fame and you get the money. So Jack's, Uncle Jack said, I, I, I know it is unfair, but someday I'll get both payment money. I hope you get rid of it, 
God, that's why. All right.